Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. And welcome to this latest Chassis Sim video tutorial. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a real treat for you. And today, what we're going to be talking about is tyre used energy and using and exploiting this in Chassis Sim. And this is something that is quite literally hot off the heels of our Chassis Sim version 3.4 free release. So let's get it, uh, so let's hook into it. So, when it comes to tyres, tyre energy is an often overlooked parameter of the tyre. And here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm absolutely as guilty as charged because I've had a number of my Open Wheeler customers ask me directly about this over the last two to three years. And my response has typically been, well, hang on, you've pretty much got all of the chassis sim um, variables to actually do this yourself. So just do it as a math uh, as a maths parameter. And it really wasn't until the last couple of months when I actually did this myself, when it really hit me str between the eyeballs in terms of just how important this is. So really, I start off today's tutorial really as a form of an apology, because this is something that I should have gotten onto a lot um, sooner, but ultimately that is spilt milk under the bridge. That being said, and the reason this is such a key performance variable is that you can use it for knowing how to drive the car properly, but more importantly, how to make those four contact patches that the, that separates you from St. Peter to make it last a race distance, make it a race distance. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why tire used energy is so critical. And so what we're gonna be talking about is how we can log this, and more importantly, how we can use it. So let's get started. So first things first, tire energy. What is it? Tire energy is the cumulative work by the tire. And bottom line is the integral of the heat energy. So what we've got here is the energy of the tire is the integral of um, the square root of um, your lateral forces times your slip angle times um, your forward speed plus um, the square of your longitudinal force times the slip ratio times the Vx vis-a-vis the effectively the traction circle radius of the amount of work that's being being done both laterally and longitudinally of the tire so bottom line in strict si units this is going to be measured in joules but we'll often talk about this as kilojoules because it's just more convenient to do so um your forward velocity is in meters per second your slip ratio is your tire slip ratio and that's percentage divided by 100 so it's expressed as a factor and um tire slip angle is measured in radian so if you want to actually construct your own math channel this is pretty much how you go about um doing it now what we've just done in um, the chassis sim version 343 release is that this is now incorporated as part of um, the exported um, log channel. So typically this is what it's gonna look like over a lap. So this is an F3 car um, that's been run at um, uh, Queensland Raceway um, in um, Queensland or off, uh, uh, sometimes often referred to as um, Willow Bank. And so what we can see here, if we take a look at those bottom chase traces, we've got tire energy front left, tire energy front right, tire energy rear left and tire energy rear right. And so that will be returned to you as part of um, the log. And we've done this for the lap time simulation, driver in the loop and the track replay. But ladies and gentlemen, he is the nail here. This gives you a direct measure of tire wear because here's the thing, if you get a brand new tire, run it for 60 kilometers and all it's doing is just running with no, uh, with no longitudinal lateral force and you're on it for 60 kilometers straight, apart from um, picking up rubbish, it's effectively brand new. What takes the life out of the tire is the amount of heat energy that you're taking out of that tire, which goes back to effectively, uh, effectively your um, energy traction circle radius of this. Once you understand that, and once that hits you between the eyeballs, your your whole perspective on this opens up. Like as a case in point, when I was QAing this, so I I constructed a uh, map channel using the chassis and map channels, and I had a quick look between the lap time sim uh, between the lap time simulation and myself doing driver in the loop. And when I overlaid the two energies, that was when it hit me between the eyeballs of the significance of this. Because clearly, since I'm nowhere near as good as the lap time simulation, the tire energies were a lot higher. And that was the thing that hit me straight between the eyeballs. So the first takeaway, ladies and gentlemen, that you get from this is that gives your driver all of a sudden a target to drive to. And that, folks, is really, really, really important. Because, like as a case in point, one of the big misconceptions I often hear 
in um uh, in some um stock car formulas um is that oh yeah it's all about muscling the car and you can't be gentle with it etc cetera, etc cetera. well that's kind of right but it's also kind of wrong where it's right is the fact that particularly with um your big stock car, uh, with your big stock cars in, when you're running them on um, road uh, on road courses you've got to be really aggressive with the braking to get the car rotated in but once the car starts to rotate you can't muscle the st- uh, you can't muscle the steering because what will happen is that you will over um, hit the tires and that's one of the classic traps that you'll always see either an amateur driver fall into or a driver who's well past their peak. So this is something really to keep in mind. And again, this goes back to the whole question of tire wear. So how much tire energy is used in a session? Here, folks, is where the chassis sim track replay is about to become your very best friend. Because the chassis sim track replay, you just can't, uh, you, uh, in addition to being able to run a track replay for one lap, you can do it for a whole session. And what you can then do is then take a look at the log data and see how that cumulative energy has acquired throughout the session. So it gives you a really, really good gauge in terms of what to, to go for. Because very sadly, with the limits on um, data that you'll get in most formulas, trying to do this directly from log data can be extremely challenging, nigh on impossible. And the other reason is that you start to run against some pretty hard limits in terms of what you can do in terms of inferring stuff from data. Um, And this is typically where things like Motec, Wintax, Toolbox will tend to run out of steam very, very quickly, where with the chassis and track replay, it basically comes as a consequence. So this is about to become your very best friend. So, incorporating tire wear and energy. So what we've done in the version 343 release is we've incorporated this as a multiplier of the traction circle ready. So to access that, you go into, um, and and I'll give you a very, very quick demo um, of this now. So typically what you'll do is that you'll go into chassis sim, you click on um, uh, the tire, and here you'll go down into thermal properties. So here we've got our tire used in it energy, and we've got our traction circle radius energy multiplier. And so you can pretty much um, uh, set the uh, set these up. Now the way this has been set up is that um, this has been set up with used energy in kilojoules and your traction circle uh, traction circle radius multiplier. The scale between zero and one. Let me walk you through how you do this very quickly right now. So let's just say that I'm going to set this up for say 10,000 kilojoules. And I'll click on the shift key, hit the left key, and click on L for linearize. And I'll start off one where the tire is fresh, and I'll go down to say 0.9 at the 10,000 kilojoule mark. Hit the shift key, hit L for linearize, enable that, and all of a sudden, that's your tire wear um, incorporated. And the other thing that I can do is, depending on what I'm analyzing, say for example, I want to see what the car's going to do, say five to six laps in to a 10 lap session. You going back to the um, track replay, I can now basically look up at the start of that lap and let's just say the used energy was say 2000 kilojoules. I can put that in, boom, I'm good to go. So that gives you a really good gauge of going, okay, what do we need to do setup wise to try and manage our um, tire engines? And you can incorporate that both with the lap time simulation, track replay, and driver in the loop. So that's a really important um, thing to keep in mind. All right, so that pr- and uh, uh, so uh, so that's pretty much your nuts and bolts of how you um, access that. Now, in terms of how you dial this in, again, ladies and gents, this is where the track replay simulation is about to become your really best friend. So, what typically you want to do is you want to start looking at laps about three to four laps in the session. And the reason you want to go about, say, three or four laps into a session is this is typically where your tire pressure stabilizes because you don't want to do this, say, going from lap one to lap three. The reason you want to do this from, say, the out lap to lap three is your tire pressures are still uh, still stabilizing. Typically, it's a rough rule of thumb. By about lap three to four, your tire pressures have stabilized, more or less. They go up a little bit, but they're pretty much constant. 
And so the big driving factor of where you're going to see variances in simulated G versus actual G is going to be the tire wear. And typically what you're going to do here is that you're going to be model is you'll be looking at um, the logged um, used energy and you'll be dialing in this map to minimize some um, uh, the differences between actual and simulated G. That's how you set this up. We've incorporated this and used the track replay to dial in our rum tire wear table. Let's see the effects of this. So what we've got here is the comparison of tire wear versus non-tire wear. So coloured is with the tire wear off and black is on. Now fair enough. What I've got here is a little bit of a Mickey Mouse example where I've been a little bit conservative with the tire wear tables. But even with a uh, and even even with a something like an F3 car where we're not using an awful lot of energy and a pretty short track like Willow Bank, have a look at um, this comparison. So here we've lost 0.06 of a second, or about uh, about 0.06, about a tenth, uh, a tenth or so. But have a look at the cornering speeds here. 114.94 for non-tire wear, 114.41 for tire wear. So consequently, you've now got that ability to project to see what's going to on, say, when the tire is fresh to when the tire is not so fresh. And all of a sudden, you can start adjusting your setup to reflect that and that folks is something that is very powerful so let's wrap things up okay so tire energy is a very important variable and it's important on two counts number one in terms of giving um, your driver a target to shoot for and really teaching them how to manage their aggressiveness these uh, versus um, what they'll do in terms of steering uh, in terms of steering and throttle inputs um, now bottom line this is the integral of heat energy so it's not particularly uh, it's not it's not rocket science per se but again it's something a very very powerful um, idea and technique to get your head head around um, and once you understand that, and once you can dial this in, you can use this to model where. And that, folks, is something that is very, very powerful. However, don't take my word for it. For those of you who are already existing members of the Shasim community, give this a spin. For those of you who are not um, existing members of the Shasim community, download our online sim and take it for a spin. And we'll catch you in the next Shasim video tutorial.